Today's khutbah is about one or fragments of one subject in the Quran. And it's a very heavy subject. I'd like to call it the subject of anger uh, and losing one's temper. And this is something that is often, like many other subjects in Allah's book, oversimplified, in our deen, oversimplified. Of course, we all know that anger is not a good thing and we're not supposed to be in a state of anger. But we're going to try to dig deeper a little bit into some of the aspects of anger that Allah talks about and the way that He talks about them. And I'd like to start with um, a kind of an unusual place, uh, acknowledgement. Uh, meaning Allah acknowledges that it's okay to be angry at certain occasions. When is it okay for a, a believer, a slave of Allah, to be angry? Because at the end of the day, anger is only truly justified for Allah Azza wa As a matter of fact, the word ghadab in the Qur'an uh, pretty much entirely is used only for Allah. People who drew upon themselves the anger of Allah, the ghadab of Allah. غَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ فَبَاءُ بِغَضَبٍ min Allah. This expression is continuously used exclusively for Allah. The only time outside of the usage for Allah you find the word ghadab used is twice, and that's for Musa alayhi salam. غَضْبَانَ asifan is occurring twice in the Qur'an. But before we go to ghadab, which is a common Arabic word for anger, and we'll dig into that a little bit more, I want to start with something else. Just a couple of words of vocabulary so you, they, they stay in your mind. Uh, even though the Qur'an uses multiple words for anger, it uses ghayd, it uses ghadab, it uses sakhat, it uses hard, it has multiple words used. I want to start with ghayd, which is probably the most important to understand. Because it's used even for believers, and it's also used for disbelievers. It's also used for people who don't like Muslims. Like, mutu bi ghaydikum, inna Allah alimun bi dhati sudur. You can, you, you want to have, you know, uh, they bite at their fingers at how angry they are at you, how, how much they hate you, some people who hate Muslims. And Allah says, you can die that way, die in your anger. Allah knows what you have in your hearts. But what does this word ghayd actually signify? This is what I wanted to start with. Ghayd actually is not to let anger be shown. Ghayd in Arabic is actually something, it, it's used for example, Halimatun Muqtada, they used to look at this big stone pot that's cooking something, and they would call it Halimatun Muqtada, which means calm yet angry. What that means is if you look at the pot, it's not moving, it's still. It's calm, it's settled. But if you go touch it, you burn your hand. Right, so you don't really know what's going on when you look at it, but if you take a closer look, or if you looked inside, you'd see something boiling inside, right? And that's the state of people sometimes. You, on the outside, they look totally calm. Like they'll even smile at you and say, Asalaamu Alaikum, how are you, etc. And inside they hate your guts. They can't stand you. Right? And they have a lot of rage inside of them. But it's not even about a hypocritical attitude. It could even be that somebody's carrying about their life very normally. They're, you know, they're, there's a, you know, uh, they're doing groceries, they're going to work, they're meeting with friends, everything seems normal. But inside there's some crazy stuff going on and there's an overwhelming amount of rage. And nobody can tell from the outside that this storm is brewing inside this person. Nowadays we see crazy things in the news, right? He was such a normal guy, I don't know what happened. I don't know why he picked up a machine gun and, you know, went crazy in the movie theater or went crazy in the college campus or whatever else. But it's not even to the extreme where you end up going on a killing rampage. Even inside of your family, sometimes there's somebody who all of a sudden erupts. And you're like, wait, you, you were never like that. What happened to you? What bug bit you today? Well, you didn't see it because it was brewing inside for many, many, many years sometimes. And they were holding it in and holding it in and holding it in and there was no way to let it out and eventually it just comes out and it comes out far too, far too much. By the way, when it does come out, then it's ghadab. When it does release, that's ghadab. If you're, if you're able to hold it in and contain it and it's boiling on the inside but nobody knows on the outside, that is still ghayv. And I want to start off with, for the most part, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, they, they stood, they would stood a lot. I mean, they were insulted publicly, their messenger who they love more than them, their own selves was insulted in front of them. He was cursed, he was spit at, he was pushed away, he was almost stoned to death. He was expelled from his home. They were taken out of their homes. Can you imagine the anger you would have if somebody was taking you out of your home? If somebody was taking me and my family and my kids out of my home and kicking them out and pushing them away and threatening them and then moving in like it's theirs? Can you imagine that kind of anger? Can you imagine the anger against those who tried to kill you? And you know, have, have, have made fun of you and even tried to kill you? You've gone to war with them multiple times? Those are the people that the Prophet 
he taught the Sahaba to engage even, the, even them with the ethics of war. In other words, you don't go overboard in your anger. You deal with them patiently. And you know, the, 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 that ghayl of the companions was put to the test. I mean, they got to release some of it at Badr. There, some of it released at Uhud, some of it released at Ahzab. But by the time we get to Hudaybiyah and the treaty that, that, you know, that the companions reached, how frustrated were they? How angry were the companions that now they've made it all the way. They, don't, they didn't even come with weapons. They come all the way to Mecca. They reach this un, unmanned place, Hudaybiyah, where human beings aren't even supposed to be there. It's an abandoned field. And the way to get there is through burning rocks. Like it's not even a path you travel for people. Even animals don't go on that path. And that's the path they took to get there because they were afraid of getting attacked. And Meccans were actually on the attack on the way that the Muslims were going to Hajj. And this is in itself enraging because for the Mecca, the people of Mecca, they had one policy. If somebody comes to Hajj, we don't attack them. Well, because you know, even the mushrik, the idol worshipping tribes, they used to do hajj too. They used to come for pilgrimage also. But the Meccans were, had mutual respect from everybody because they're not going to attack somebody who comes for the purpose of worship. But they even then broke their own constitution and tried to attack. They sent actually back then Khalid ibn Walid, who wasn't Muslim yet, radiallahu anhu. They sent a, a battalion with him to try to attack the Muslims on their way to, to Hudaybiyah, on, the way, on their way to hajj. So they had to take another route, and literally, some narrations describe as they're making their way to Hudaybiyah, they were bleeding because the, 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 the jagged rocks and the thorns on the path, because even animals don't go there, were cutting their legs and their shins as they were going. And the shoes were melting off from the burning rock, and people's feet were burning as they were going on this path to get to Hudaybiyah. They didn't get there easily. And when they get there, and they bring all of their animals there for slaughter, then they find out after much back and forth that they can't do hajj. They have to go back. And not only do they have to go back, they have to slaughter the animal, and they have to give the meat of that animal to the people of Makkah. Because <laughs> that's where the meat is supposed to go. So those people who kept us from doing hajj are going to eat our animals. That's, that's the first udhiyah, that's the Eid al-Adha, the first one. We're very happy when the animal is slaughtered. They were not happy when the animal was slaughtered. You know, and th this was ghayr. So when the Prophet ﷺ told them to shave their heads, take their ihram off, head back, actually that ghayr turned into ghadab. It came out. And for the first time, the entirety of the companions, the people of sami'na wa ata'na, we hear and we obey. This is how Qur'an describes these people. We hear and we obey. The Prophet ﷺ tells all of them to listen, none of them listen. None of them listen. So to the point where even Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who's supposed to be the symbol of the obedience and loyalty to the Prophet sallallahu hears Umar bin al-Khattab, Umar got up and spoke out. And he lashed out, actually he lashed out at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He got loud in front of everybody. And he even said, alasna ala al-haq? Aren't we following the right religion? Wait, what do you mean? And he even questioned the Prophet, didn't you see a dream we're coming here? <laughs> 